Scott Richard Weiland was born October 27, 1967 at Kaiser Hospital in San Jose, California, the son of Sharon Williams and Kent Klein. At age five, he took his adoptive stepfather, David Weiland's surname. Around that time, Weiland moved to Bainbridge Township, Ohio, where he attended Kenston High School. He moved back to California as a teenager and attended Edison High School in Huntington Beach and Orange Coast College. Before devoting himself to music full-time, he worked as a paste-up artist for the Los Angeles Daily Journal legal newspaper. During a career spanning three decades, Wylam was best known as the lead singer for the band Stone Temple Pilots from 1989 to 2013, as well as the supergroup Velvet Revolver from 2003 to 2008. He also established himself as a solo artist, releasing two studio albums, two cover albums, a live album, and collaborations with several other musicians since 1995. Though derided by critics early in his career, Wyland's onstage persona was known as being flamboyant and chaotic. He was also known for constantly changing his appearance and vocal style, as well as his use of a megaphone in concert for vocal effect. Now widely viewed as a talented and versatile vocalist, Wyland has been ranked in the top 100 heavy metal vocalists by Hit Parader where it came in at number 57. In 2014, after his departure from Stone Temple Pilots, Wyland formed Scott Wyland and the Wildabouts, receiving mixed reviews. Some critics and fans noted Wyland's apparently failing health and dwindling energy. While touring for his 2015 album Blaster, Wyland lost friend and longtime musical partner, guitarist Jeremy Brown and experienced a string of negative press. During a period towards the end of the year that saw a reported turnaround of Wyland's live shows, Wyland was found dead on his tour bus in Minnesota at the age of 48. Upon his death, many critics and peers offered re-evaluations of Wyland's life and career, including David Frick of Rolling Stone and Billy Corgan of the Smashing Pumpkins, with Corgan stating that Wyland was one of the three voices of the generation alongside Kurt Cobain and Lane Staley. Actually, um, on behalf of uh, the rest of the band, um, we'd like to thank mostly uh, our families and uh, my new wife, Janina. And uh, most of all, we'd like to thank all of you people for supporting us. Thanks a lot. In 1986, Wyland met bassist Robert DeLeo at a Black Flag concert in Long Beach, California. The two of them were discussing their love interests when they realized one of them was the same girl. They developed a bond over the incident and ended up moving into her apartment. Wyland's childhood friends, Corey Hickok and David Allen, rounded out the group, both of whom would soon be replaced by Eric Kretz and DeLeo's brother, Dean. They took the name Stone Temple Pilots due to their fondness of the initials STP, and one of the band's first opening performances is Mighty Joe Young, they opened for Electric Love Hogs, whose drummer Dave Kushner would one day co-found Wyland's later band, Velvet Revolver. In 1992, they released their first album, Core, spawning four hits, Sex Type Thing, Wicked Garden, Creep, and Plush. In 1994, STP released their second record, Purple, which saw the development of a more distinctive identity for the band. Like Core, Purple was a big success for the band, spawning three hit singles, Big Empty, Vaseline, and Interstate Love Song, and selling more than six million copies. The critical response to Purple was more favorable, 
with Spin Magazine calling it a quantum leap from the band's previous album. In November of 2000, Wylan was invited to perform on the show VH1 Storytellers with their surviving members of The Doors. Wylan did vocals on two Doors songs, Break On Through and Five to One. That same month, Stone Temple Pilots appeared on The Doors tribute CD, Stoned Immaculate, with their own rendition of Break On Through as the lead track. On June 19, 2001, STP released its fifth album, Shangri La Di Da. That same year, the band headlined the Family Values Tour along with Linkin Park and Stained. In late 2002, the band broke up with the DeLeo brothers and Wyland having had significant altercations backstage. Stone Temple Pilots would reunite between 2008 and 2013 releasing a brand new album in 2010. STP began to experience problems in 2012 that were said to have been caused by tensions between Wyland and the rest of the band. Despite the band's claims that their fall tour would be celebrating the 20th anniversary of CORE, this did not happen. On February 27, 2013, shortly before the solo tour was set to commence, Stone Temple Pilots announced on their website that they had officially terminated Scott Weiland. Weiland criticized the band after they hired Linkin Park singer Chester Bennington as his replacement, claiming he was still a member and they shouldn't be calling themselves Stone Temple Pilots without him. When Stone Temple Pilots disbanded in 2003, Velvet Revolver sent Wyland new music, which he took into his studio and added vocals. This music eventually became the song Set Me Free. Although he delivered the music to the band himself, Wyland was still unsure whether or not he wanted to join them. Despite performing at an industry showcase, they recorded two songs with producer Nick Raskulinx a recorded version of Set Me Free, and a cover of Pink Floyd's Money. For the soundtracks to the movies, The Hulk, and The Italian Job, respectively. Wyland joined the band soon after, and Set Me Free managed to peak at number 17 on the mainstream rock chart without any radio promotion or a record label. It was prior to a screening of The Hulk at Universal Studios that the band chose a name. After seeing a movie by Revolution Studios, Slash liked the beginning of that word, revolution, eventually thinking of revolver because of its multiple meanings. The name of a gun, subtext of a revolving door which suited the band, as well as the name of a Beatles album. When he suggested revolver to the band, Wyland suggested black velvet revolver. Liking the idea of, quote, something intimate like velvet juxtaposed with something deadly like a gun. They eventually arrived at Velvet Revolver, 
announcing it at a press conference and performance showcase at the El Rey Theater, while also performing the song Set Me Free and Slither, as well as covers of Nirvana's Negative Creep, Sex Pistols, Pretty Vacant, and Guns N' Roses, It's So Easy. Velvet Revolver's debut album, Contraband, was released in June 2004 to much success. It debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 and has sold over 3 million copies worldwide to date. Two of the album's songs, Sliver and Fall to Pieces, reached number one on the Billboard Modern Rock Tracks chart. The song Sliver also won a Grammy Award for Best Hard Rock Performance with a Vocal in 2005. An award Wyland had won previously with STP for the song Plush in 1994. We were on stage, we blasted it out, and we, we fucking killed it, and, and we're back. The second biggest crowd I've ever played to, except for when I played in front of all of the Greeks in ancient Greece back in 500 <laughs> BC. <laughs> That was amazing. Did it live up to your expectations, knowing what a brilliant, amazing event Live Aid was? Was that no, brilliant for you? It really was. It was amazing. Um, you know, I, when I remember watching uh, it the first time, um, when I was, uh, let me see, 17 years old in 1985, um, just thinking, one day I shall rule the world. <laughs> and you so are. Uh, um, no, it was actually, it, it was amazing. It really was amazing. Um, a very fuzzy, warm feeling uh, for such a jaded rock star like I am. No, I'm quite not a jaded rock star. You're so it not. Beautiful. Well, you guys are legends, Velvet Revolver. Thank you so much, Scott. Enjoy the rest of your day, won't you? Velvet Revolver released their second album, Libertad, on July 3rd, 2007, peaking at number 5 on the Billboard 200. The album's first single, She Builds Quick Machines, peaked at 74 on the Hot Canadian Digital Singles. The second and third singles, The Last Fight and Get Out the Door, both peaked at number 16 and 34 on the mainstream rock chart, respectively. Wyland's vocal and musical style proved to be versatile, evolving constantly throughout his career. At the peak of Stone Temple Pilots' success in the early to mid-1990s, Wyland displayed a deep baritone vocal style that was initially closely compared to that of Pearl Jam singer Eddie Vedder. However, as STP continued to branch out throughout its career, so did Wyland's vocal style. The band's third album, Tiny Music, Songs from the Vatican Gift Shop, had Wyland singing in a much higher, raspier tone to complement the band's more 60s rock-influenced sound on that album. Later albums showcase Wyland's influences ranging from bossa nova on Shangri-La Dida to blues rock and classic rock on the band's 2010 self-titled album. And that was really the kind of direction that, um, you know, I wanted to go uh, go with uh, for the, this album once I decided to make a, a solo record. Um, you know, I can't get away from pop melodies, but I really wanted to, like, push the envelope.
Wyland married Janina Castaneda on September 17, 1994. The couple divorced in 2000. He married model Mary Forsberg on May 20, 2000. They had two children, Noah, born in 2000, and Lucy, born in 2002. Mary Forsberg Wyland's autobiography, Fall to Pieces, was co-written with Larkin Warren and released in 2009. Scott Wyland's autobiography, Not Dead and Not for Sale, co-written with David Ritz, was released May 17, 2011. In a November 2012 interview with Rolling Stone, Wyland revealed that he was engaged to photographer Jamie Watchtel whom he met during the 2011 filming of his music video for the song I'll Be Home for Christmas. Wyland and Watchtel married on June 22, 2013 at their Los Angeles home. Wyland was found dead on his tour bus on December 3, 2015 in Bloomington, Minnesota while on tour with Scott Weiland and the Wildabouts. The band's scheduled gig that evening in nearby Medina, Minnesota had been canceled several days earlier, but they were still planning to play the next night in Rochester, Minnesota. He was 48. Police searched Weiland's tour bus and confirmed there were small amounts of cocaine in the bedroom where Weiland was discovered dead. Police also found prescription drugs and sleeping pills on the tour bus. No underlying cause of death was immediately given. However, toxology reports have stated that Wyland died of an accidental drug overdose. The examiner's office also noted his cardiovascular disease and history of asthma. News of Wyland's death quickly spread throughout the internet with many of his fellow musical peers including his former band members, along with fans and music critics throughout the world, sharing their condolences, tributes, and memories. A day following his death, his former bandmates and Stone Temple Pilots issued a statement saying,
Happy belated th American Thanksgiving. What are you most Thank thankful you. for? Uh, my wife and my children. And how old are your kids? 13 and 14. That's awesome. How would you define your music legacy? Um, I've always looked at us as a band, uh, as first, first off, um, the bands I've been in, uh, as rock and roll. Um, but I've always looked at us also as bands that change from album to album and morph into different sounds. I think to stay in one sound is, uh, a career killer. I love how you also put out an album of nothing but cover songs in a few years back. Who is the one artist, living or dead, that you'd want to collaborate with? David Bowie. Now why David Bowie? Out of everybody on the planet. He's my biggest influence uh, musically. Uh, vocally and fashion-wise.